me not being here at 6 30 was a me problem so well i mean be driving when i was supposed to be here yesterday was a me problem so we both kind of fucked okay. up there we go two for two two for two two We're for two going. all right man you want to get right into it fucking a right uh well shit ladies and gentlemen i got kevin kellum here with me mm-hmm. uh host of the what is the name of your podcast it is you can check me out, Sports Kita Wrestling. Uh, that is from Sports Kita, which is a huge sports net group based out of India, now worldwide. It's the number one sports app in India. And now we have a huge uh, pro wrestling network, obviously, WWE, AEW, very popular. A lot of fan content that spurs off of that. So I do shows for them five days a week. Uh, and you can get it on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook. We have a huge presence on Facebook. But if you're more familiar with the other apps, we're there too. So just search Sports Key to Wrestling will pop up. We're usually in like the top 200 on Apple Wrestling Podcasts. It's pretty cool. And we've only been Fucking doing right, you the are. audio. We've only been doing the audio feed for a little while, which is pretty cool. And every we do a lot of video stuff. We have Vince Russo. He used to, he used to write for WWE, WCW. He does our Monday night show after Raw. We have Dustin oh, wow. Tal, who's a, a legendary manager and, and has worked with all the big names. He does our Friday show after SmackDown. And so we have a lot of great content. And then I'm on like five days a week. So I do like the topical day of stories and stuff like that. And a ton of other content, top fives. If you're a wrestling fan or you know one, just send them over there. And then, of course, I'm doing even more wrestling stuff, uh, even more wrestling stuff this week with AAW. So it's pretty cool. There it is. There it is. So, you know, you, it was kind of a long journey, you getting to, you know, this division of radio, uh, just, you know, being a figurehead in a community, in a very passionate community, people who are into professional wrestling, no matter the league. Uh, Tell me what it took to get here. Well, I started doing, I mean, I was doing college radio and I was really, really passionate about it. And that would have been the mid 2000s. And uh, that's when like podcasting started, but it really didn't become something until about 10 years ago. So we're talking like five sure. years ago before like the, uh, it was com- people know what the word podcast is now that you don't have to right. tell someone the majority of people under a certain age, I would say under 40 kind of know what it is. Uh, and that isn't a shot at anyone older. You know, there's other things they like to consume their media on. It's fine. Sure. Uh, and uh, you know, just like everyone knows radio, like, Oh, is it a radio show? Is it this? So, we were doing that through my college radio station and we kind of understood like, Oh, this is the way things are going to go. So we didn't know exactly how. And we started a show called rumble radio. And through that, we got a network of people and, and there were just a ton of shows that came out at the same time. Cause it was like everything that was nerdy and specific that felt niche was away. And we were on college radio, which was already that anyway, it was just a broadcast version of it. Right. Where you were playing bands that couldn't be on a bigger radio station. So you had a, the alternative, the alternative and I went on to work on an sure. station. So we're like, Oh, well, we can do this. And we said, well, what if we do the show on the radio? And there were a lot of promoters that liked that because some of them were older or understood that the shows are internet. Those are such that's such a specific slice of the pie, but a really passionate one that'll buy tickets that'll like go to your show or want to be engaged by it on another level. So then uh, we were doing a show called Rumble Radio, and there was just so much independent wrestling that wasn't nationally televised, but was drawing you know two to three hundred people, and they wanted to play bigger rooms. And one of those main groups um, was Ring of Honor, and many talent has come from there. Seth Rollins started there. Uh, Brian Danielson, who's in WWE for a long time, CM Punk, who's back in wrestling. So like anyone who's a huge star now in wrestling has their roots. Uh, a majority of them, more than half of them do, to uh, Ring of Honor. And we had a relationship with them. Then locally, AAW, which has been around since about 04, and they kind of grew out at the same time, uh, they launched the careers of Seth Rollins, who I mentioned. And he hmm. started with them, and now he's headlined WrestleManias, and he's a very, very successful guy and arguably one of the biggest wrestling stars in the world. And that was in the Berwyn Eagles Club on 26th Street in Berwyn. And I was a college kid watching those shows, and I was like, And I had friends that worked there. And so we just kind of all got together and said, what if we turn this into a show? And we were doing like good podcasting numbers by 2005 standards, you know? Right. Um, And we're like, oh, wow. And then we're all starting radio careers and the show kind of devolved after that or media careers after that. Um, But uh, that was at St. Xavier University at 88.3 on the South side, 103rd and 103rd and Pulaski. And Ring of Honor would run in, they would run uh, the Frontier Fieldhouse. So they would run like four or five times a year. And we would just get tickets. So we were college kids, right? So we're getting free tickets. So that's really cool, right? And then AAW sees that and they're like, well, they're trying to sell a thousand tickets. We're trying to sell four or 500 tickets. Can you help us do that? I was like, yeah, give us talent. And then from that, years later, I start doing stuff for AAW when, you know, I'm laid off from radio and that happens. 
uh, and I'm interviewing people backstage. And I'm playing like the mean gene role, you know, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm interview, I interview people already bands and stuff and you interview. People. Sure. But I could go to you and be like, Hey, I need you to interview this person. And here's how this interview needs to go. It needs to be in 90 seconds. And this person's going to really just advance the story of the show that we're presenting and pull back the whole curtain. Uh, and so that, that is, that is my role. It's really, really fun. Uh, I, I, I like that I get to wear a suit, but I usually wear gym shoes because I don't want to be in, in dress shoes all day. That's kind awesome. Of, that's, that's the thing I've learned. Well, if so, you're going to be yeah. walking around, it's practical. Yes. You, oh, I get my steps in. I get my steps in because I also have to go and wrangle people for, for this show. So we have, two, we have three shows coming up here. I'm fairly certain I will get 25,000 steps in the Berwyn Eagles Club over the course of the 29th and the 30th, because we have three shows. And then they, we, we tape some of the, inter, the interview segments that'll come up in the pay-per-view. We'll be on Fight TV on the 29th and then uh, Saturday afternoon at 2 p.m. and then the night. It's a two-night tournament. We're doing the Jim Linem tournament. It's dedicated to Jim Linem. If I know a lot of people listening in the Chicago area. Jim Linem was on, he was on Q101 for many, many years and then uh, got the ball rolling with AEW and had all this great network. And he was just, he had a good mind for media and a great mind for wrestling. And he passed away sadly a few years ago. And we do this big annual tournament that like elevates wrestlers. But this one's a little bit different because we have wrestlers from like WWE, AEW, All Elite Wrestling, MLW. We have people that have wrestled in AAA in Mexico, people wrestled in stadiums. And we're going to have them wrestle in front of 300 people at the Bruin Eagles Club. And it's going to be like the most, imagine like, uh, a foo fight like a foo fighter's lollapalooza after show this is the wrestling equivalent of that and it's over three days it's going to be awesome so uh go to aawpro.com aawpro.com no a lot of people confuse it with all the wrestling it's aaw so a lot of people confuse that but yeah it's going to be nuts i'm sorry i'm talking so much oh no it is it is okay aawpro.com go over there see what the hell kev is talking about um i want to go back to something that you mentioned uh earlier which is just the idea of being able to capture everything you need in an interview in 90 seconds. Just, you know, yeah. you've been doing this, you've been doing this for a long time as have I, and uh, you know that like so much of getting to, so much of being able to answer deeper questions is kind of being able to like gain the trust of who you're interviewing and wrangle your way in over time. So how much of an adjustment was it for you to, with the pressure of like, I need to get this content in a minute and a half. Uh, and also like, well, part of it is like a lot of what we do, we have a controlled space, you know, like we're, we're not in the same production level as WWE, but I would say for an independent wrestling promotion, AAW has the top <clears throat> production level in terms of the amount of people we have producing the show we have a we have what's called a Tron. We have a screen. So like when you go to our shows, a lot of independent wrestling shows you go to at this level, it's two or three hundred people. Maybe it's a gym, and uh, you're supposed to know what the storyline is before you get there, right? You go to our show. We have a screen up. It tell you you're gonna follow it. It feels like WWE, but with all of the intimate setting, with none of the um, broader restrictions. It's meant for an like a more punk rock audience. It's the alternative of what's going on. And you're still clued in on it. You could you could hop into our show, not know what happened to the last one, and you're ready to go. You know what I mean? Sure. You can bring your friends to our show, and you'll know what's going on right away. And you'll know who the you'll know who the champions are. You'll you can pick your favorites, and then on top of it, you're going to get your stake in the ring. Our guys are going to kick each other's ass, and they're going to just tear it up. My role is to make it more intense, almost like put those splashes you get from a Rocky movie, and get the character to kind of come out so that you understand why you want to boom understand why you want to hate them understand why they don't like the guy that you want to cheer understand why they don't like the guy you want to boo and kind of um do the place setting i'm the waiter you know what i mean they're they're gonna they're gonna cook up the plate i'm just the waiter i'm i'm showing you the menu i'm showing what's going on with it and making it a little bit easier and those things are important because we're still telling a story even though it's it's a show you still have to refine those things because if you don't, it, it can get really inconsistent and you mean it doesn't have the gravity to it. Yeah. I, yes. I know I have an idea what somebody's going to say to me before they do it, but sure. we can do multiple versions of it. And, and there's different things like that. I, I want the thrill of doing it live. I've done a couple of things live. These shows will be live by the way on fight TV. So you'll be able to watch these anywhere in the world. I know we're talking about buying tickets and stuff like that. Um, but you can watch these anywhere in the world. Anyone listening to this, you can watch this on Fight TV. That's the same app that like 
all the big boxing apps uh boxing events like the thriller boxing events are on that like all the big major fights there's a handful of different you know mma things that are on it too so it's nice. f-i-t-e and that's on like roku and i believe it's on apple as well you can get it on your computers and stuff like that too so uh all three shows friday night saturday afternoon and sunday night and we'll, we'll have a tournament so you'll have a tournament so we'll know kind of who wins and who our next big challenger is going to be for the title and just a ton of talent. It's, it's a lot of people too. I have to do a lot of wrangling, but it's hard. You mentioned getting the most out of somebody with something is kind of hard. Cause some of the people like I'm talking to them after they went out there and had like a car crash and right. it, people are like, Oh, it's, it's fake. It's fake. It's fake. It was like it, the, the adrenaline and the physical and mental wear and the come down is no different than an athlete immediately having to come and talk to you after they do something that's another thing is we want to capture that we want the heaving breath we want someone in sure. sweat. i've had to interview people covered in blood like covered in their own blood like real blood and like th- they're jacked up there's the adrenaline they're there you, you, oh they could just come down no we want to capture that we're we're there was one time we were going to do an interview with somebody like sometime maybe like a half an hour after the match or something like that and some things happen in the match and we're like, no, we got to get it now. We have to get it now. Like, and so there's some kind of like roving reporter stuff, even though we know where the story is going, we still want to capture all of the madness of it. Cause it is crazy. Like there is yeah. some insane thing. I saw people take doors, not tables and bash each other with doors, house doors. And I had some idea that people were going to go through tables, which we've seen in wrestling before, but this was insane. And there was blood everywhere. And, and I was just like, no, we can't, we got, we got to do this now. So I grabbed my producer, Mike Pekovich, and he was like, yeah, let's get it now. And so we had to go from one side of Bourbon Street, which you've been to Bourbon Street before. You've been to 115 Bourbon Street. It's a huge building. So we're all the way over on the other side of the building and we're, and we can see it on a laptop. So we're watching the show live and we're like, oh, we got to go, we got to go grab them. So this is the, this is the, the thing where I'm like running around and like grabbing people and stuff like that. So it's- And your steps then. Get my steps. I'm going to get my steps in. <laughs> Yeah, but no, it's that's that's when it's I don't want to say it's easy to grab them, but then sometimes you get those people where they just come down and you can see the adrenaline. They're just like, I don't, I don't want to do this, but I got to do this. Okay, what do I got to say? Because we got more show to sell, we got right. more things to do. So, and some people are good sports about it though. Too. Do you uh, do you think there's a double standard between people who will write off professional wrestling because of the scripted aspect, and people who, in that same breath, will like rave about somebody's improv show or stage show? Tons. It's, uh, I think professional wrestling is the uh, WWE called it sports entertainment that aggravated me because it got away from what pro wrestling is. It's pro wrestling. It's fine. It's right. semantics. You know, like it's like when people say, "Oh, well, stand-up comedy isn't comedy, and comedy is improv." It's like you're just arguing over terms. We know what it is. You can just call it something different. We know what it is, right? Right. Um, but the combination of those two words is true. It's the most complete form of theater to me. And that drives people who are trained stage actors crazy when I say it, but look at it. You, you know who the villain is, you know who the antagonist is, you know who the protagonist is, but now they're doing it with this whole other level of physical presence that you would appreciate if you went to a Broadway show. All right, so you're getting drama, of like proper theater, right? You're getting, oh, for sure. phys- you're getting something physical that's really daunting and wild, right? Like you would get at Broadway. You're getting the pageantry that you would get from vaudeville or burlesque, right? And then, and then if you're a fan of sports, you're getting legitimate athletes wrestling. Now you see some people at the cruiserweight level. I'm talking under 205 that can do phenomenal things. I mean, absolute, like they're clearing 15, 16 feet going over the air into a crowd of people catching someone like a missile, uh, still taking all of that blow of catching them and being able to do that, make it look like it's the, like something out of a, a Marvel movie in front of two, 300 people. Sure. And you're losing your mind. I've seen that happen countless times. I've seen people jump off balconies and all these things I would never, ever do, but they've done it. And they're like, oh, well, you know, I'll have to do that a few shows down the road. And they talk about it like it's casual, which is crazy to me. Oh, yeah. I'm still, I'm still a fan, but then I have to, you know, do the broadcasting thing and reel it all in. I do think it is a double standard. And also like in the Midwest, Chicago specifically, we're just like, we're a great comedy town. We're a great theater town we're great pro wrestling town. And it's, I think it's much more blue collar. I think that's another part of it is it's much more blue collar. There's more bros, uh, you know, like the same way people had a backlash against Marvel movies, like 10, 20 years ago. Now it's the norm right now. Every actor wants to be in one. 
Um, the same thing with wrestling. You know, I don't oh, know yeah. if it'll ever change that way, but I mean, I look mean, at my the, boss. The Rock. The Rock was the biggest wrestler of all time. Now he's the biggest movie star of all time. There's so much skill set that comes that comes from it that you get in a sense of reading a crowd too. Uh, and I see people do that. A lot of wrestlers take improv classes because they kind of get that skill of timing and, and being able to work naturally, but still knowing where you're ending and stuff like that. A lot of the mindset is very parallel to other things I've done. Like in Oh, there is such an overlap between traditional performers and pro wrestlers. Like it's no wonder why somebody like Dwayne Johnson or even like John Cena are making their names as legitimate actors at this point or why, you know, the, uh, I've been getting into it a little more in the last year, just cause, sure. um, you know, my, my boss is also the like co-owner of NWA. Oh, yeah. Your, 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 you, the, your boss, he, I believe he owns the oldest wrestling promotion in the world. The he NWA, does. The National Wrestling Alliance, which is, oh, yeah. which is a, a great, a great promotion right now and having a great revival again. I do, pl- I, I do plan on just like following him to fucking St. Louis at some point and just being like, all right, you gotta, I gotta see Let me this watch in front this. of me. Let me sit over your shoulder and see what's going on here. Yeah. Cause he'll like always tell me about it the Monday after he'll get back. And I'm just like, n- none of this translates well into words. <laughs> Cause there, there's a lot of lingo with it too. There's a lot of lingo with it that is kind of odd. And, and I suggest to AAW, it's a, it's a pretty like abrasive show. Um, but I love seeing people who are seeing it for the first time or at least seeing it for the first time in a long time or only know WWE or something on television, which is fine, right? Because uh, right. our show is different from that. Uh, the, our show is, it, it, is, uh, it is kick-ass wrestling for kick-ass people. This is, if WWE is Lollapalooza, this is Riot Fest. Like, and right. I mean that in the right way. And there's no shot at WWE at all. Uh, Because a lot of our guys and gals have gone on to work there and vice versa. We've had people come from there. We're going to have talent from WWE on the show. And, and, you know, it's really, really special when you work at something that isn't in a giant arena, but has talent that could play in all of those. Sure. I'm telling you at the show, someone on the show is going to be on national television. Someone on the show is going to be in the NWA. Maybe they were the next NWA champions out of this. And when you have that level uh... of talent and people are there because they like it so much, it's just fun. It's just fun. And people can see it. A casual person can see that right away. Yeah, it's it's the same deal as like somebody works at Second City and respects the fuck out of the craft. But if they get an offer from SNL, they're not going to turn that shit down. No, no. And you wouldn't want him to. You know, you you don't even you wouldn't want him to. If you're Uh, a good friend, you would you would want him to go. Yeah, I I would say this: the Second City comparison is really, really good. Like this is like a Second City of pro wrestling Uh, in the sense of like the amount of people that have come out of AEW just since like the mid 2000s is through the roof you know through the roof i mean and and if they haven't come out of here they at least made their way through here you know and so i've been with them for like the last year but i've done promos with like kevin owens who's on network television now with smackdown and um did some stuff with seth rollins uh, when he was in AEW, and then now he's in wwe so you know it's just it's a really when it's that good people will go out of their way to do it you know like the i'm around the foo fighters or the foo fighters will play the metro Maybe they won't For play sure. everywhere, but they're going to want to play the Metro because it's a special place. And yeah, that's kind of what yeah, you'll see them at the doing. Cubby Bear every few years. Like, fuck yeah. it. <laughs> How much wrestling lingo do you get from from Billy talking about all this stuff? He'll definitely use phrases that I don't understand. But what's a I'll, what's a I'm wrestling like, phrase that you don't get that you hear and you're like, I want to know what that means. Like, I'll I'll tell some to you. I'll, pull, I'll pull I can even tell you. Brothers. It's just it, it's. Like, you know, in the Peanuts cartoons where the adults are talking and it's just like all, yeah. (laughs) And that's literally what it is. Like, hey, Billy, how was St. Louis this weekend? Well, we had our heel go over a baby face and uh, there was a big, uh, the the big blow off is coming here and they got this going on here and we got... We yeah, got, we got our, we got our mid car, we got our topper car, we got we got this guy, we got our under car, we got the we got a, we got we got this, we were, we're escalating to this, and, and we have and a I'll turn. Like, yeah. And I'll check everyone's Instagram from over the weekend. And there's like pictures of him in a bowler hat and shaking hands with people. I'm like, oh, this provides no context. What the fuck? <laughs> um, and it, kudos to uh, Billy and what what he's done with the NWA uh, because Definitely. the NWA is such a specific brand that has such a it's real touchstone and memory is almost like spring it's almost like um you know, like movies you grew up with like 
it's best times or like that people remember in a certain way. And now he's kind of taking all of that in terms of the aesthetics and then doing it with new talent and new people. And Nick Aldis is there. who's absolutely fantastic. And Trevor Murdoch. And it's all, it's very similar parallel to what AAW is doing, but on a little bit broader scale and stuff like that too. And uh, they do events on fight as well. So the same app that you get NWA you stuff go. on, you're going to get AAW on as well. And uh, so it's, it's going to be a, it's gonna be a really good time, man. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting through it. We're all getting, we're, 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 we're through the end of this. I hope uh, we're through the end of this thing. Right. I hope we're through the end. Of you this would think so. Right. Mess. But it's, it's dragging on, it's dragging on, you know, it's dragging it, on a little bit. Yeah, Jesus. You remember when the <laughs> pandemic started and it was like a, it was like March of 2020. Oh yeah. It's going to be over in like two months. Right. It's going to be over in yeah. like two or three months. Oh no. People were saying like, Oh, it's going to be the summer by the time this is all over. <laughs> Uh, June, that's so long. <laughs> and didn't you, um, you, you're working with Billy at Madame Zuzu's, right? And then I am. you, was the opening right around that time or no? Um, it opened it's in September of last year. I yeah, started working I remember, there. I remember I did a stand-up show with you guys around. Yeah, there. yeah, you were, uh, yeah, the, uh, it was the one stand-up show there that I actually coordin- coordinated before mm-hmm. we handed it over to Larry Bloom from Funny Love Larry Bloom. Lake, who's doing... Larry... Mm. Chef's oh, he kiss, does a... Larry Bloom, good man. He does a great job. Funnier that was by a the fun lake. Go night. Go seek him out. Funnier by the Lake. You want to go so show... go want to go see a comedy show, North Burbs. He's he's the man. Larry Bloom, the Bloom Rooms. Go to the Bloom Rooms. You know, good man. He that, up at, that show uh, in old particular. Man. I did the old Madam Zuzu's with him. Like the last yeah. time he did something at Madam Zuzu's. And then I got to do something with you. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. It's kind of like round oh, yeah. about, you know, so it was, it was fun, man. But yeah, I, was trying to th- I was trying to think, were you guys opening like at the near the, I was trying to think there was, cause there was a couple other venues I knew and businesses that were like just starting right before the pandemic. And then we, that just kind of like wiped them out. Well, they signed the lease in February of 2020 and they were anticipating oh. opening over the summer. So just like the worst they, timing possible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they had another GM. She ended up having a baby and just like leaving to be a mom. And I started um, basically like almost like a year ago this week. But uh, yeah, I, I remember that first comedy show because uh, Chloe, you know, the, the, you know, Billy's business partner and partner in life was like, you know, don't you want to just like let Larry Bloom do this because he's been doing this for I'm like, no, it's fine. I got it. I know enough comics. <laughs> and it was just the entire night was a complete shit show, but I'm so like glad it happened. What was the shit show about it? I'll confirm and deny things that were. Okay. It had nothing to do with you. It I was, was just more was the concept of know your audience. Yes. Yeah. Because, you know, I I was still fairly new to the North Shore at the time, right? So I didn't know the demographics for there. And so it was like middle age to like, you know, uh, baby boomer Republican types. And I, I go guess. Have a good time. They want to go yeah. and have a good time. But yeah. I guess it was like silently understood or supposed to be silently understood that people were supposed to keep it like at a PG-13 level. <laughs> And I remember, uh, like, you opened and it was fine. And then the first person to go on after you was Ed Towns, who just opens. He opens with a line about (laughs) ass-eating. And this Friday and Saturday, we're going (laughs) to... And for most of his set and it was so beautiful and he knew exactly what he was doing and it, i'm so glad i was there for it but like his entire set in the room you know yeah. like, i'm hosting and, and there's people settling in and these are people that haven't been out and seen a show or anything maybe they haven't been to a movie yeah. you know in like eight nine months so and that's been a big thing for like the last year there's a lot of people like you're clearly every time i've done comedy the last six or nine months I'm running into someone who's, this is our first time we've been out or oh, for we sure. went to this, we went to this, but this is our first comedy show back. Right. And I Do you feel was, pressure and being responsible for that monumental moment. I hope so. I mean, I think that's more of a bigger deal for the headliner, the last thing they see. Sure. Um, but I'm so, but being in that case, I was hosting, right. So I'm like the first thing, first yeah. one to go on. And there's a little bit more pressure on me to get the room right. And there was just we had that thing the whole night. That isn't really a shit show. That that this. That's oh no! I mean, show. I've been oh, to no, worse. I, 
D- Dan, Don't worry. I've been to worse shows. I've oh no, I didn't. Worse shows. Oh, I didn't think it was bad. I mean, shit show in the most positive and hilarious okay. terms. Okay, all right. I've been to shit shows where it's bad. <laughs> you know, like, no, I've been to shit shows like recently where you have people that are clearly don't know how to be out again. And, and that that's the sense. And then you have to deal with it in like real time and then still make all the people that showed up to have a good time. Yeah. feel okay. You know, you're stuck in the plane. You see all these videos of people losing their minds on the planes and stuff like that. I, I'm only saying this because um, there is a clear end date for my time at Zuzi. It was that this is actually my last week working there. And so oh, I didn't um, know that man, it's wonderful. Yeah. Like, yeah I yeah, am you actually you enjoyed it. Yeah, no, I'm so fucking grateful and yeah. I, I'm leaving in the best possible way. And the reason is I'm uh, actually opening up my own f- uh, food truck in during the summer. That's awesome, man. What, what are you doing? Thanks, dude. Tell me about it. Uh, it's going to be coffee, tea, grilled cheese, uh, yes. buffalo I'm chicken on. dip. I'm going to open at seven. I'm going to close at two. I'll be closed weekends. Uh, I'm going to be... Hopefully, if all goes according to plan, uh, park next to the Deerfield Metro mm, in the, from like 7 to 1030. And then I will move to like the parking lot of uh, Sunset Foods over on Green Bay Road for the lunch rush. And that'll be, a, you know, the, like, is there is there a big food truck vibe in that area? Because I would I could see that being a suburban area, like jumping onto something like that. Not during the week. There's a food truck festival on the weekends, at least during guess, the summer yeah, on the North Shore. That makes Shore. sense, too. But I mean, during the weekday, like the working man who can come up to you, get what they need and go back to their... That's... People like that, dude. People like that a lot, you know? So, like the, the food carts... I live in Albany Park on the northwest side of town. The food, uh, where, where's my phone? The food carts on the oh, northwest yeah. side of town are pretty solid, too, you know? And I can tell you for a fact, those are solid. Like, you know which one to go to. There's like the Elote's truck that you can go to that's pretty solid. Uh, oh, for sure. You know, like there's the place where you can go to for the frozen da- daiquiris and stuff like that. Some of the, that's probably illegal. Like you're not supposed <laughs> to sell daiquiris on the street. But there's, there's no, absolutely not. Street. That's uh, okay. Is it tough with the permits? Um, working on that now. This is yeah. all very, very tentative. I took, uh, in the meantime, I have a bartending gig at night where I can actually like, go home and like actually spend time with my kids and I don't have to be afraid of like taking a nap on my day <laughs> off and getting waking up to like a bunch of texts <laughs> industry industry so, industry industry oh yeah right? I need I just need like the manager pressure off of me temporarily there you go man and, and also like with a food truck you can do the pop-up thing and like all right well yeah, yeah we're gonna go out this night and do it I'm out bartending this night let's let's hit up a bar and we're gonna go you know, make some food and do some things here and stuff like that too. I like the, I like the idea, man. Good on you, dude. Thanks dude. Yeah. Uh, but the thing I was the most afraid of my entire year working at Zuzu's was it coming out publicly, just the level of contempt I have for most of the people who live on the North shore. <laughs> just like nine. And Where's I live out here at? now. I gotta find, I gotta find my white socks at. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I, gotta I know. Right. <laughs> no, like this neighborhood be would be great if it weren't for the fucking people. Ah, uh, you know what? I don't think it's that bad. Like, and this is just me doing many, many shows. And also, I have that bitter South Side South Sider chip on my shoulder. But sure, last ten years, last ten years, I've lived on the North Side of the city. And mind you, I was in Logan and and, and Albany. I haven't gone up to the Burbs. It's a whole different Chicago then. It's a different slice oh, yeah. of Chicago. Um, but I was bred as like a South Side Catholic working class kid. And we were always taught like, you just make fun of North Side people. They make fun of you and then you just have a beer at the end of it. Right. And it was it was playful. It was never like mean. But then you meet people uh, from other parts of town and they take it very personally. And everyone takes everything a little bit too personally now. I, even myself included. I was, oh, yeah, it's a joke. I'm a comedian. I have to remember that. Uh, but there, there was this segment of material. I, I haven't done it in ages um, about being about making fun of people from the north side and then them not knowing it it's very regional and it's something i can do in like wisconsin and indiana and they still get it but if i left town i wouldn't do it uh and it was but i can see what you're saying but it's just somebody like just doesn't get the same references you do or or something like that and that is there's not none of that is based in race or anything it's just it's uh somebody who's not too far away from you who just thinks you're on the wrong side of the tracks and you don't care what side of the tracks they're on, but they need, they, they've just been told that you're, you can't be better than them. Like you, you can't, like there's that sense of um, 
isolation with people and i don't know people got to hang out with each other more and that's the problem now is you've had so many people have been locked in their own little uh algorithm for lack of a better phrase for the better part of the year and a half now and that's intensified you know you know the internet was supposed to like set us free democratize us but um (laughs) all it really did was just like reinforce people's shitty behavior Because now you can correct. like now you can build these communities of people only people who agree with you, mm-hmm. and it's going to make you more susceptible to not being able to, you know that that's one thing. Like if I'm wrong, I want to be told I'm wrong. If I'm being a dick, I want somebody to like pull me aside and let me know. There's a way to do it, but with the internet now, it's all public. So like the way people take the the way we respond to each other in like comments now. Right. Like there's a way to do it and tell someone publicly like, hey, I don't agree with you. I think you're wrong. And here's this. But the way people respond to that contextually is out there. We get it with wrestling. There's some people like critiquing us about the show came up this weekend because we were saying we feel we have the the biggest tournament in pro wrestling in the United States this year. And people be like, how can you even say that's not on television, not this? It's, it's like, well, look at the talent we have and the combinations we have and all the different matches if you're a hardcore wrestling fan. To the hardcore fan, we think we have that tournament. And and I'm happy to say it. And I think God bless our producers and our promoter, Danny Daniels, and the talent are coming together. And I get to work with them. You know, this is me kissing ass. I feel that. And so I, like, had a discussion with somebody. And there was – it evolved into somebody getting injured in our ring. And it happens. And it's sad. And wrestlers understand that and they accept the risk to a certain degree. And the guy was like, why would, he, why would you want to have that injury there in front of, like – just that many fans and it was just like this like he had to dismiss what we were doing while still trying to be nice to us so you have to make me feel less than but you want me to support you so you 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 want to discredit me so you feel like that credit then goes to like it's this deflectionary thing that really isn't based in i understand your point you understand my point we have empathy for each other the empathy part is gone you know what i mean like like everyone talks about that but you have to actually do that that has to be something yeah. that is expressed and like stated and sent to someone you know like uh it's like the and, per my last email of internet comments yes exactly exactly man so uh are, are, do, what else are we covering here before we uh, wrap up do we have anything else um i think that is uh i think okay. that's the last of it okay i i actually i got one more question you know sure, you are up, um as a as discussed earlier, you are a stand-up comic. You perform all over Chicago and, you know, the Chicagoland area. What do you think are, what do you think is the overlap with you that has made you succeed in radio and wrestling and comedy? Like, what do you think that, uh, that, you know, some of those parts is? I guess to some point you could say I'm a healthy narcissist, right? There no you one go. wants to say they're a narcissist, but how could I not say that if everything I do involves me talking into a microphone at someone, mm. you know, like, so like I have to understand, I have to recognize that with myself. Maybe it's my age too. Uh, but I also never want to have this sense of, uh, especially with standup, because it's just you talking and you have to make it magic and it's different. And we brought up improv earlier. You get rope from the audience. The audience knows you're making it up. Like they know you're creating it in real time and they almost want to see the magic trick of it. And that's, that's like 40% of what you're doing. And then the other 60% is make them laugh, you know, make them lose themselves and the, what you've created with that other 40%. With stand up, it's you have to will it <laughs> into existence with yourself. And so it has to be a very internalized. So you have to bring them into you and then come along with them. And all the best sets I've ever had, if they were, they got into me. They, they understood who I was and I got to show them who I am. And then um, we get to go to some really wild, weird places. And I get to you know, yell and stomp about different things. And, and then they're on board with my, my perspective. So, uh, and other people can do it different ways. I just know what worked for me was I'm going to make fun of myself. You're going to know what type of person I am by making fun of myself. Now let's make fun of some other stuff. And isn't it fun just to make fun of stuff? And like, so once we're on board, like, I know what I am. I'm never going to be a perfect person. And, and I know like I'm from a big family and I'm not, I'm not the number one kid and I, I'm okay with it. Cause I know who I am. And I've, and once you kind of know who you are, oh, it's, 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 there's something refreshing about it. Like, you know what your weaknesses are, you know what your strengths are. There's a, there's a Absolutely. clarity with it. Maybe, maybe this is called maturity. 
Uh, but I feel saying maturity means I have to start really paying off some college debt, which I am not prepared to do at the moment. No, that's that's not what maturity is. It's just uh... <laughs> good. Oh, it's a relief. <laughs> It's, no, I, I think maturity is just like realizing that, you know, even if I exercise, I'm not going to lose this weight. So I might as well have this burrito. Yeah, but you'll try. And by try, you try. You wouldn't see you. I, you wouldn't, you don't have the, you, you just do the true. You know, the, I, you know, I, I start done, I've this done diet that. tomorrow. Yeah. I, I had a salad. I had one salad this week. So I've been really good. That, no, that doesn't count. Kevin. I tell myself that I just had, a, I just have Coca-Cola. I was supposed to not have caffeine for two weeks. I did it for a week. That's good. Right? Sure. I ordered $30 worth of Burger King, but I got a diet Coke. So now I can eat anything. Did it last night. <laughs> Boom. Nailed it. Well, Kev, thank you so much Dan, for taking the time to out to be you. on. Always, you're, always, you're, always a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, been it's been honor. too long since I've randomly ran into you at a bar. We got to make this happen. We we got we yeah. got to have some cold ones again, man. Absolutely. And fuck yeah, you've, you've always been uh, really sweet to me and my goofy company. Uh, uh, and thank thank you for everything with Zuzu's and, and obviously you guys are doing. Some oh great well, stuff with Billy and, and Bill, Billy understands the wrestling promotion thing too, so I appreciate that. Like the the yeah. weird intersection. Even though you're like, I don't know what these heels and faces are, but he, you know, come he out is a- really... AAW this weekend, Berwyn Eagles Club. It's gonna be really great if you've never been. Get your ticket. It's wild. You're right on top of the ring. It's an awesome experience. AAWPro.com. Tickets there, and all the uh, pay per view information is there too. You don't have to watch it live. You can watch it live. Or you can get it on demand over the weekend as well. Too. Link is in the goddamn description, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again. You are always welcome. Have an awesome night. Keep on rocking in the free world, my friend. Keep on rocking. Right. May the road rise up to meet you, motherfucker. <laughs> I've been trying to find a sign off for like five years and one day I might. You're just trying all of them? I, I had keep on watching the skies for a while and that ends I don't know. our broad that ends our broadcasting day or you know like all these different things man. and that's the way it was yeah thank you dude I appreciate it, dude I gotta run to a dinner with Charlie she's gonna be she, uh, oh shit Ch- tell her I said hi I will I will I'll also tell her you said hi I will I'll be in less awesome. trouble because I'll tell her I did this with you so she'll be like okay oh. yeah no well, if it's with oh, Dan, yeah. the <laughs> cosign I'll, I'll get, it'll be like, but it was with Dan, right? I was like, yes, it was with Dan. So I'll be in less trouble. Oh, yeah. She reaches out, I'll be like, yeah. And I'll like put, send a screenshot over. We'll, 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 we'll verify this shit. All right. Dan. You got an alibi uh, and me always. Uh, Adore you. Thank you so much. I hope everything. Love goes you well too, motherfucker. I uh, love you, buddy. Take care, man. Have a good one. Catch you later. Bye.